Hi, very good morning to all. So, in this lecture, I would like to discuss some important questions in the initial phase of mechanics of solids that is frequently asked in almost all aptitude tests. So, the basic prerequisites that you should know is the formulations of stress and strain, Poisson's ratio, elastic modulus, rigidity modulus and of course the another topic is mechanical properties of materials. So based on these topics I will be solving some uh, 6 to 7 questions which is whose uh, practical or uh, whose uh, theoretical portion has already been explained in the previous lectures okay so i will tell you some some very simple concepts or uh, some simple methods to solve some of these confusing data okay so uh, we will go for the questions first question is ductility is measured in terms of you have four options ultimate tensile strength percentage elongation modulus of toughness modulus of resilience the answer is percentage of elongation because if a material if this is a material and you are applying a tensile force it is very important you are applying a tensile force then what happens the amount at which this is reducing its area as well as the amount in which this material is elongating ok that means the percentage elongation so this material is said to be ductile if it characterizes or uh, if if this material is having a property like this that property is called as ductility ok so it is based on percentage elongation as well as percentage reduction in area ok both can be named as ductility ok now second question is in a tensile test necking starts at so so basically necking is nothing but if you are if the the concept that i have told in the uh, last question is the same as this okay this this was a tensile test if this member is fixed here and you are applying a tensile force here that's all that's a tensile test uh, at what at what point the this material breaks okay so in order to find that okay in a tensile test necking starts it so necking is nothing but this is necking you can say this can be necking that means its area is reducing okay so if you analyze this stress strain diagram that I have discussed already in our previous lectures you can see soon after this ultimate tensile stress soon after D then the material is flowing like a liquid so you can see this is flowing like a liquid and that part is called necking uh, or that property is called as necking ok so in a tensile test necking starts it it's not lower yield stress it comes somewhere here upper yield stress will come around here ultimate and stress stress is this one this point so soon after this ultimate tensile stress the necking starts okay now next one is a very simple question ratio of lateral strain to linear strain is called poisson's ratio those who have not understood the concept you are applying a force in this this material is of length L and breadth is breadth or depth whatever it may be it's B ok if you are pulling this with a tensile force what happens this will elongate right this will elongate to say a length L plus delta L but what happens its volume remains the same what happens is that since this is elongating there is a reduction in its B part ok so what happens initial B becomes 
is reduced to this thing. So if you calculate these two, the reduction is say dB. So Poisson's ratio is nothing but dB by B by dL by L. So this is called as lateral strain, the strain that is happening in the lateral side. Okay, that is called as lateral strain and here towards its longitude it's called as longitudinal strain okay now our next question is Young's model is for a perfectly rigid body is okay so what do you mean by a perfectly rigid body so if you are applying a force if this plane is a rigid body if you are applying force on this what happens it does not have any deformation or elongation okay so for perfectly rigid body strain will be zero that means dl by l will be zero so you know that from hooke's law e is equal to sigma by epsilon and this epsilon is zero that means e is equal to infinity anything divided by zero is infinity answer is infinity okay now next question is brittleness is opposite to toughness malleability ductility plasticity this is also a simple question what do you mean by brittle brittle is nothing but something which breaks down easily a brittle material is nothing but if you apply force it breaks break down immediately so the opposite is toughness okay so for wire drawing operation work material should be malleable tough ductile plastic so before that you should know those who are not aware of wire drawing operation it's nothing but it's a simple operation in which if this is the work piece and you are applying this work piece or you are drawing this work piece from this direction through a couple of dies okay so what happens its area is reduced as well as length is increased right you are applying the force along this a tensile force along this direction you are passing this work piece through this die so such that it gets this shape of the die okay so for that the material should be ductile okay fine next question is hardness of a material is resistance to machining wear scratching any of the above so from the definition of hardness it is clear that it is a resistance to all these things machining wear scratching all things okay it's a resistance the main thing is that it is a resistance okay so this is very important okay next question is material with highest ductility is gold lead copper tin okay so i have just given some of the properties of gold lead copper tin all these things see gold is basically highly ductile and highly malleable okay you can see from your applications itself in in the surroundings itself you can know that gold can be compressed as well as it can be applied with tensile forces such that it changes its mag i mean its geometric characteristics right okay so these are both ductile as well as malleable lead is highly malleable but it's it is having low ductility okay copper is also highly ductile and highly, highly malleable because you can see that copper is used as wires for transmission lines and all since it can be malleable as well as it is ductile also but it is not as much as ductile and malleable as gold that's why the answer is gold okay so gold and platinum actually these both 
or highest malleable and ductile metals okay okay so our next question is which property of metal to resist elastic deformation so in this question i purposefully i have made this question to the last phase because you have many mechanical properties that we have already discussed in the previous lectures and i will tell you there is an there are some confusing terms always that means stiffness strength toughness hardness all these terms are very very much confusing so i will make you understand or uh, i will make you understand easily of of these simple concepts stiffness strength and toughness how will you define all these things so if you see the stress strain diagram i have marked three lines here okay up to the point b in stress strain diagram this is the elastic limit right and up to d it is ultimate tensile stress or maximum stress and this is the rupture okay or fracture point whatever it may be okay so these three lines you can take out from these three lines you can easily remember the concepts of stiffness strength and toughness stiffness is nothing but it is a resist it resist elastic deformation strength is nothing but it resist maximum stress toughness is nothing but it resist the fracture that's why i have made these points here okay it resist up to here you can call it as stiffness up to here this is maximum stress uh, that means strength and up to here it's fracture so it is called as toughness so the property of metal to resist elastic deformation so this line up to elastic deformation this line resistance is called as stiffness and in case of hardness the only thing is that it resist all these things hardness of a material is resistance to machining wear scratching everything okay so this is known as hardness okay so actually hardness is the uh, how much it penetrates its penetrating power okay so thank you for viewing this lecture thank you